In this video, I'll be discussing the link between the first Chebyshev function and the phi function that we've been discussing. Last video, I showed its connection with the zeta function, the phi's connection with the zeta function. Now I'm going to do the opposite and show its connection with the theta function. What I'm going to prove in this video using the phi function is that the integral from 1 until infinity of theta of x minus x over x squared dx exists. Now it's going to diverge so that we use the phi function like we did with the zeta function to prove that it has no zeros on the line real part of z equals 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with the integral from 1 until infinity of maybe something a little similar, maybe d theta of x over x to the z dx. Okay, now it might look like I'm going out of nowhere, but the reason why I'm doing this is because d theta of x is really well behaved. Let's look at theta of x. Okay, so theta of x is going to be 0 for a while, then it's going to jump up, then it's going to jump up again, then it's going to jump up again, jump up again, and at each prime, it's going to jump up by an interval that's going to be the natural log of p instantaneously. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, it means d phi of x is going to be zero everywhere, right? Right there, there's no change. It's constant, so it's zero there. It's zero here, except at every prime, when it's change, it's instantaneous change, d theta is going to be natural log of p. Okay, so that means that I'm going to have natural log of p as my instantaneous change. Okay, I need my value right there, so I just plug in p, because that's when it changes by natural log of p. And now I also need to sum over all of my primes p. So right here, all I did was use the fact that this is zero everywhere, so that I could discredit all of that, except when it's changing between these constant intervals, when it's natural log of p. Now this is sort of pseudo, but it ends up working if you do it out rigorously. I hope you recognize this function because it's phi. Now I forgot to mention that the real part of z here is bigger than 1. Okay, and this is for convergence reasons, and same reason here, right? Let's go ahead and look at this in a different light. I could say that u is going to be 1 over x to the z, so that du is going to be minus z over x to the z plus 1. So dv is going to be equal to d theta of x, so that v is just theta of x. So that out the other side, we get u, which is 1 over x to the z, times v, which is theta of x. Now evaluate it from 1 to infinity, minus the integral from 1 to infinity of v, which is theta of x, times du, which is minus z. There's no, it's dx, not dz, so I can move the z out, times 1 over x to the z plus 1 dx. Okay, but right here, let's evaluate it. So what is the limit? as x approaches infinity of 1 over x to the z times theta of x minus 1 over 1 to the z times theta of 1. Well, theta of 1 is 0. Get that out of here. That's 0. Now, what about this? Well, think about it. Real part of z is bigger than 1. So this part of it, this part of it, it's going to be 0, because remember, theta of x, as we've proved before, is O of x. So it grows slower than x. And x grows drastically slower than this polynomial. And so when you have something that grows drastically slower like this, you end up getting 0. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, this is simply equal to z times the integral from 1 to infinity of theta of x over x to the z plus 1 dx. Okay, now I'm going to make a u substitution, except I'm going to call it t. x is going to be e to the t, 
So that dx is e to the t dt. So that this right here is going to be z times the integral. This is going to be from 0 because t equals natural log of x. t of 1 is going to be 0. t of infinity is infinity. And then I'm going to have theta of x, which is e to the t, times, then right there is going to be e to the t, which is going to be the x part of it, except I need a minus because originally it was in the denominator, and then times z plus 1. Multiply this by dx, which is e to the dt dt. But e to the t cancels out with the plus 1 right there, so that this just becomes this. You've simplified this all the way down to this integral. And you can sort of see how this more closely relates to this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a theorem. Okay? And this theorem says that if f of t, okay, a function of t, is bounded and locally integrable, meaning that on open intervals it can be integrated, and that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus zt f of t dt. And that z right there is going to be the input of this function g exists for real part of z bigger than 0. And g can extend holomorphically for real part of z bigger than or equal to 0. Okay, so basically, I take this integral and I extend it a little bit further it's so that it's not necessarily equal to the same integral, necessarily. But as it turns out, the integral of e to the minus 0 t, well, 0, e to the 0 is 1, that doesn't matter, of f of t dt is actually just going to be g extended. So if you extend an integral, uh, if you extend a dampened integral of a bounded function, then that just gives you the same values. So let's use this to our advantage. Let's say we have f of t. I'm going to say f of t is going to be something like this, except I want it so that real part of z is bigger than or bigger than 0. Right here it's real part of z bigger than 1 because I have phi of z, so let's make it bigger than 0. Okay, so I'm going to have theta of e to the t times e to the minus t. Okay, I'm not going to put in the z yet, because the z comes in here. And then minus 1, just so that we can get in real part of z bigger than or equal to 0. Okay, now how do I know this is bounded? Well, let's think about this. Theta of e to the t is o of e to the t, since theta is o of x, so theta of e to the t is o e to the t. Multiply this by e to the minus t, that minus 1 doesn't matter when we're dealing with o's, so that I get from this is just o of 1. Now o of 1, what does that mean? That means that f of t is going to be less than or equal to some constant times 1 for sufficiently large t, meaning that it's bounded for sufficiently large t. And because this has no asymptotes, this is bounded everywhere. And then I'm going to have my g of z, of course, is going to be the integral from 0 until infinity of f of t e to the minus z t. So that's going to be theta of e to the t times, that's going to be e to the minus t z plus 1. That's just basic exponential multiplication, dt. And I'm also going to have minus this extra term, which is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus zt dt. So, what exactly do I have here? Well, this right here, by this relation, is going to be phi of z plus 1. Okay, there's a problem, is that I don't have the z plus 1 outside, so I need to divide this by z plus 1. Okay, and I'm subtracting off of this. This value right here 
is quite simply 1 over z, right? So g of z is phi of z plus 1 over z plus 1 minus 1 over z. This can easily extend to a real part of z bigger than or equal to 0. Just as long as z isn't 0, okay? Because phi can be extended for real part of z bigger than or equal to 1, so that translating it up by 1 would make it real part of z bigger than or equal to 0. This, all of this, can be extended so that this satisfies this. We get that the integral of f of t exists. Well, let's look at the integral of f of t. Okay, so now we have the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t, which was theta e to the t times e to the minus t minus 1 dt. Okay, I know this exists, but now let's make a substitution. x equals e to the t, so that dx is e to the t dt, which is x dt, so that dt is going to be dx over x. This is going to be equal to the integral from, okay, x of 0 is 1, x of infinity is infinity. Okay, I'm going to have theta of, that's going to be x times 1 over x minus 1 times 1 over x dx. Okay, then from that, I'll have the integral from 1 to infinity of theta of x divided by, that's going to be x squared, minus 1 over x dx. Now let's write 1 over x as x over x squared, and then combine these two so that I get phi of x minus x over x squared dx, and it exists. It exists, and that's crazy. And that's it.